let the whole world see. So sing it for the glory of the risen King. Continue on. We praise your name this morning, for it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen.
I'm still awake So I picked up a pen and a page And I started writing just what I'd say If we were face to face I'd tell you just what you mean to me Tell you these simple truths Be strong in the Lord and never give up hope You're gonna do great things, I already know God's got his hand on you, so don't live life in fear Forgive and forget, but don't forget why you're here Take your time and pray These are the words I spoke you said you were hurting and i felt your pain in my heart i want to tell you that i keep on praying love will find you where you are i know cause i've already been there so please hear these simple truths be strong in the Give up hope, you're gonna do great things. I already know God's got his hand on you, so don't live life in fear. Forgive and forget, but don't forget why you're here. Take your time and pray. These are the words I would say from one simple life to another. gonna do great things i already know god's got his hand on you so don't live life in fear forgive and forget but don't forget why you're here take your time and pray and thank god for each day his love will find a way these are the We'd like to take this time uh, to recognize all of our seniors uh, that are graduating from First Baptist, uh, that are seniors that belong to First Baptist Gumboro. And I would like to say that uh, they are, I just want to let you know, they're going to represent us well. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not supposed to have favorites, and that's good because I really don't like any of these kids. So it's pretty good. So, but. <clears throat> I would like to, uh, you have a bunch of So first, we're, uh, Ella, Ella Mary Agold. Marie? Marie Agold. <clears throat> okay. She's graduating from Trinity Valley Community College with an Associates in Liberal Arts. Yeah. Okay, but she plans to uh, attend a fitness camp over the summer, then she will attend UT Tyler or DBU in the fall to continue her education. <clears throat> her favorite scripture is Revelations 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears me, I'll come in and dine with him and he with me. Her favorite color is red. Her favorite sports team is hard for me to get out of my mouth, but it's the Spurs. Um, <laughs> And her favorite animal is the fox. So please uh, give a hand of applause to Ella. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And you know what? I, I was sitting over here actually for the first time, I think ever, and I uh, could actually see back here what's going on that I can't see from over there. And there's, you do good. And it's, it's, it's really amazing to see all of these people. Uh, we're blessed. You're, you're blessed. And uh, it's really good. Um, Sydney Podorf. Uh, she couldn't be here because she is actually still on campus. And actually, we need to pray for Scott and Pam as they will do be, be doing Mach 1 out of here directly after church uh, to be able to get there. But she is graduating from Midwestern State University. She's going to have a Bachelor's of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies and Special Education major. Her major accomplishments are she's graduated. Here we go with all the Latin. Graduated with summa cum laude. Received the President's Medal of Excellence for the top graduate in the College of Education at Midwestern State University, and she graduated with honors. She is serving, or her future plans are to serve in college ministry at the University of Oregon. Uh, my title is essentially a college missionary intern. I will be serving in Eugene, Oregon at least until December, possibly for a full school year. Um, someone that's been in that part of the country, that is an incredible, they need they need Jesus, <laughs> I'm just going to say, okay? So it's really good that she's there, and that's really awesome. Scripture, Isaiah 52, 7, and Isaiah 43, 1 through 2, and Galatians 5, 13. Her favorite color is yellow. Her hobby is running, reading. This is hammocking? Is that what that says? Hammocking? You know what? I think I could do that one. I, that, I might pick that one up. Uh, her, fav <laughs> her favorite food is... Uh, Coffee and cake. So me and Sid get along pretty good. Uh, next is Matthew Wayne Stewart. He's graduating from Maybank High School. And his future plans are to go into the Navy. He's actually been to MAPS already uh, and has plans of being a Navy diver. So we need to keep Matthew in our prayers. Uh, his favorite verse is uh, Joshua 1 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Um, his favorite color is blue. Your favorite sports team, brother, you're going to have to help me out with this. It's soccer, and I don't know what, what is it? Yeah. Paris Saint Germain. Okay. He's good at soccer, by the way. His favorite hobby is soccer, and uh, his favorite food or candy is Kit Kats. All right. Next is Maricruz Villanueva. <laughs> She's graduating from Kemp High School. Her major accomplishments include proudly serving as drum major for the Kemp High School band from 2015 to 17. She was all region and all area band. Well, you weren't, but your band was. All, is that an individual award? All band is an individual award. Okay. All region and all area band in 2014-15. Being a member of the Business Professionals of America, she was a regional finalist and state qualifier in fundamentals of word processing. She is her senior class president. She is the unofficial FCA president at Kemp. She was announced as Miss Kemp High School by her teachers. At her senior award, she received the Cedar Creek Rotary Club Scholarship, the Trinity Valley Electric Co-op Scholarship, the Kemp Band Booster Scholarship, and she also received the Texas Big Country Scholarship from Hardin Simmons. Her future plans include attending Hardin Simmons University to pursue a bachelor's in biblical studies and a minor in leadership studies. Later, she will pursue her master's of divinity. Her favorite verse is Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Um, this might sound like a lot, but after, I'm quoting you perfectly, okay. This might sound like a lot, but after filling out countless scholarships, you learn to brag about yourself. Thank you for all your prayers and support since we moved to this church. Her favorite color is blue. Her sports team are what are sports. Uh, her theme is black, white, and gray. Her food is anything good, biscuits and gravy, and brisket is also yummy. Okay, good. Uh, I tell you what, 
I, I love these kids to death. <clears throat> Last, but certainly not least, Zach Jones. Actually, I misspoke. It's Dr. Zach Jones. I can't just say Zach Jones anymore. Southern or Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, degrees he's earned. He's got a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from Texas A&M. He's got his Master of Divinity or MDiv at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. And he has a PhD in World Christian Studies at the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, his accomplishments are a beautiful wife and two lovely daughters. And his plans, of course, are to return to East Asia uh, to continue his work there. His favorite passage of scripture is Proverbs 3, the entire chapter. Uh, he, he would like me to tell you guys that they are back in Texas through Christmas, and they very much look forward to meeting you all, and they want you to please continue to pray for them and their work in East Asia. His favorite book, he's been hanging around Bill too long, his favorite book is the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament. That's what it says, in the New Testament. So his favorite TV show is 24. He's a true Texan. His favorite is Dr. Pepper, and his theme is Jesus. Give a round to all of our graduates. We have a word of prayer for these graduates. Heavenly Father, we thank you for their accomplishments today. Lord, as they have studied and did well, they give credit to you for their lives. Lord, we thank you that we were able to cherish these moments as they came up through this church as youth and adults now. Lord, as they go out into the world, they may represent Jesus Christ well. Lord, fill them with your spirit continually. And God, we give you praise for their lives. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Just real quick, I wanted to give you all a, an update. Thank you all all so much for your attendance Friday. And uh, we raised a little over two grand uh, Friday night for the Portugal mission. Again, we are blessed. I, I thank you so much uh, for your support. Thank you. Did I turn it on? Okay. They still like a little money if you'd like to give the uh, trip to Portugal, market missions, and put it in a box, and they will get that. Uh, never know what God's going to do through the lives of one of these young people. We see that continually in this church. All right. Turn, if you will, in your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 14. The Sermon on the Mount closes with one more great appeal to be saved. You see, when you preach God's worth and the truth of God's worth, word goes out, it calls for a decision in our life. We make decisions every day. These roads we take, the lives that we live, we're faced with many a decision as we leave this place today, there will be decisions to be made. And Jesus closes out the Sermon on the Mount, one final appeal, and he says, listen. He's talking to his disciples, and he's drawn them aside, and he makes a very personal appeal by, he says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. And now we ask that your Holy Spirit open our hearts to receive the word that you have for us. Many of us here this morning, we have all kinds of needs in our life questions in our life 
And Lord, you will answer those needs and answer those questions if we'll open the eyes of our heart and let us see what the Holy Spirit uh, tells us today. We give you praise, for it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. He comes to this final appeal and he says, Enter ye in at the gate. And then he talks about eternal life. And he talks about two roads, two ways. One way is a broad way that leads to destruction. And the other is the narrow way that leads to eternal life. Now, we shouldn't have a problem with that. We should want eternal life. Every one of us should desire to have eternal life. Well, Christ says that's the way to go. But listen, there's some things that stand in our way. The Bible says one wide gate leads to destruction. One narrow leads to life. And there's, listen, there's only two groups who travel this road or one road or the other. The Bible says there are many and there are few. There's a majority and there's a minority. The majority will follow the road to destruction. Can you believe that? The minority will follow the road to eternal life. The Bible says, uh, the, there's a poem that says, the way. And it simply reads like this, to every man there openeth a way, the ways and the way. And the high soul climbs the highway, and the low soul gropes at the low road or way. And in between are the misty flats, the rest drift to and flow on this way, a highway and a low way. And every man decideth the way his soul shall go. So life calls for a decision today. It calls for a decision right now. You have a decision to make. When you came in the back doors this morning, you came, I believe, you came into the house of the Lord listening to hear a word from God. And he calls out and he says, listen. There's a wide road and a narrow road. The high soul gropes for the low road and the low soul gropes for the high road. Now the reason why heaven is the road less traveled, the Bible says there's only a few that will make the decision this morning to take that road. Only a few. In a crowd like this, only a few today all over uh, America, only a few around the world will take the road less traveled. One reason is because of deception. You know, deception appeals to a lot of people. Wide is the gate. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to travel a lot. I like to go down the highway. On the way down to my favorite part of Texas in a little town called Recklaw. They're building a road. And when you leave, well, when you leave Eustis now, man, the speed limit's 75. Boy, you can get on that thing and you can just go and go. When you get to Athens, you take a left there, go around on the loop. No red lights whatsoever. Man, I just cruise along, not worrying about anything. Every once in a while, I'm cruising and singing, and I might go past the turn. I'm so happy. But man, you can just turn around and go back and just keep going towards that wreck law. That's my hometown. Some of you don't know. But listen, after you get out of Athens about five or six miles, there's construction going on. Now, it's two lanes right now. It's been two lanes for years. It's narrow, it's dangerous, and you have to watch what you're doing. But one day, they're fixing to open it up to a four-lane highway. Let me tell you, don't we all like to ride on the wide, wide, wide road? I do, because it's easy. The 
Bible says the wide road leads to destruction. There's many on it because they're deceived. They move easily down life. There's nothing required there. You can just cruise on down living the way you want to. And, oh man, the broad road is easy to take. There's plenty of room on it. You know, nobody's going against you there. Man, you can go on down the road. And the vast majority of people today in America are traveling the broad road. The Bible says it's got many who travel that. Not only that, the broad road is an easy road. There's no stop signs. There are few rules as you travel a four-lane highway. No requirements, no restrictions. Like I said, no red lights. The broad road is an all-inclusive road. All can come that way. I've heard today in our, in our churches, in our lives, our society, it says, well, you know, we've got to be more inclusive and just everybody can make it to heaven. They just go different directions. We're all going to end up there, preacher. You know, live your good life. I heard a lady tell me the other day, well, all my life I've tried to be good. I'm, I'm bound to get to heaven one of these days. And I wanted to say, ma'am, that's not what the Bible says. I don't know where you've been going to church. I don't know what you've been doing. But the Bible says the broad way is where everybody travels down it and we indulge ourselves. Anything goes is welcome. Uh, sin is tolerated. Truth is moderated. And acceptance is elevated. You see? That's the wide road. And this is for people who believe in anything and believe, actually, they believe nothing at all. Oh, preacher, one, the Bible is okay, but it's not for today, they tell me. But the Bible says there's a road that leads to destruction. And it's that all-inclusive, self-indulgent road called the broad road. And they don't all lead to God. They think it does, so they say, enjoy. They're like the a man says, I'll build bigger barns and I'll eat, drink, and be happy for tomorrow. You know? Man, tomorrow may never come. They're driving down this broad road, and that word many... It includes the atheists, the agnostics, the humanists, the uh, communists, the Jews, the Gentiles, all of those. But it also includes Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, Lutherans, Catholics. You see, it includes everybody. The word many. Brother Bob Pittman preached about a simple sermon on being born again that I've ever heard. It simply says, if you're going to get to heaven, how, do you, how are you going to get there? It's not by being religious. It's not by being a Baptist. It's not by being a Methodist or a Buddhist or any other of those. It's by being born again. Jesus says you must be born again if you're going to uh, get into heaven. But he also says here, the majority of people think they are traveling on that broad road and they're going to get to heaven no matter what. And the Bible says it leads to destruction. You see, majorities don't rule, do they? Jesus Christ rules. Majority, if you follow the majority, most of the time you're going to get yourself in trouble, I guarantee you. There's a little animal that lives up in the Arctic. It's called the Lenning. The Lennings are like little rodents, little mice, or fuzzy, bald creatures, rodents. Once a year, they get to traveling, and they migrate, and they get in great herds of them, and they're running across the Arctic tundra until they get to the edge of the ocean, and then they just fall off into the water and drown. And we might think, well, that's crazy, that's silly. But human beings do the same thing. We follow the crowd. We follow the road. 
that's uh, wide. We follow the road that's easy where everything goes. And when we get to the end of life, we found out that we've wasted our life and we've jumped off into destruction and our lives are ruined. You see, most people are like those little linings. They just follow someone else. Because you know what? It's easier just to follow a group that leads the way than getting out in front and leading the right way, you see. Proverbs 14 says, There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end of that way is death. And we heard about grace a while ago. Beautiful song, Rhonda. That was wonderful. And I'm warning you, if you're not on the road marked grace, driving the vehicle of faith, you're headed down the wrong road. So what road are you on this morning? The broad road or the narrow? And then not only the deception there, there's a direction there. Direction attracts some people. Jesus said that the gate that leads to life is narrow. And the gate is narrow and, you know, you can only go through it empty-handed. Now listen to me. You can't bring anything with you if you're going to go through the narrow gate. When it says the gate is narrow, it's because that Jesus wants you to leave your pride behind, leave your prestige behind, leave your position behind. It's not what you are, but who you trust who you put your faith in. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Enter ye in by me. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible says. And the only way we'll get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He is that gate. He says, I am the door. I am the way to eternal life. No man comes to the Father except how? Through me or by me. Jesus doesn't need anything that I can bring with my hands. All he needs is my heart and my faith. You see, he wants us to put our faith and our trust in him. He wants everything that you've got this morning. He wants your life that you might give your life. He says, when you lose your life, then you find it. Now, that's hard for us to comprehend how we lose something and find something. But let me tell you, we have to fall, the Bible says, like a grain of our seed, a corn. And we have to be buried with Christ in baptism. We have to be dead in Christ. And once we're buried and dead to ourselves, then we can live through Christ. And he can live through us. And we can be born again. And we can have that eternal life that only God can give us. Now, Christianity is simple, but it's not easy. We are either in Christ this morning or we're outside of Christ this morning. We're either traveling the broad road or we're traveling the narrow road. The beautiful thing, he gives us far more than what we can give him. You see, Jesus Christ gives us many things in life, but when I came to know Jesus Christ in 1975, he forgave me of my sin. And man, let me tell you something. I was, had all kinds of sins in my life. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That might be your life this morning. You're living a life on your own. You're trying to please God, and you just can't please God because he doesn't need anything you have. He wants you to trust him by faith, simply by grace. He speaks to our heart this morning. If you're here and you know that you're lost, you know that something's missing in your life, Jesus Christ wants to fill that void. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to forgive your sins. He wants to take your old rags and give you a robe like the prodigal son who came home. 
You know what? He wants to take all the problems that you've got and give you peace. I told someone the other day, listen, we worry and we fret about material things all our life. You know, oh, can I just have this? I'll be satisfied. We're never satisfied, are we? But God can satisfy us. If we come to him and bring everything and give it to him, then we can have his peace. All our failures, I wonder how many has ever failed. I know I have. I can raise my two hands and my arms, but I'd also, if I was pointing all my failures, I'd have to have all my toes and legs going up because I have failed many times. But you know what? God forgives me. I am forgiven. All my losses and all my hates and things like that, He's exchanged those for love. You know, I love people. And it hurts me to see when people are, are mad at each other or griping at each other or doing wrong to each other. We ought to love one another. Inside a church, there ought to be the love of God there. And when you come to God as a sinner, he receives you and makes you a saint. Isn't it wonderful? He can turn your life around if you'll let him. You can get off of that broad road and get on the narrow road. It's just that easy. Friends, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Now, I've had some uh, people tell me that I was really narrow. And I said, yes, I am because narrow is the way that leads to heaven. And there is a narrow road that leads there. Up in Dallas, they've got a highway called Lover's Lane. I think that narrow road that leads to heaven is Lover's Lane because it leads there by the way of the love of God. You see, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. That's you and I. God so loved you and I that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's just that simple. God loves you this morning. He loves you just like you are. Maybe you came here this morning in your rags and in your sins and the world he wants to take you out of that mud and the mire of this world and set you on the straight and narrow road that leads to heaven. There's a broad road that leads to hell. It goes by the way of the devil. But you know what? The broad road and the narrow road, they intersect at one place. And that's the cross of Jesus Christ. You stand at the point of the cross today. The cross of Jesus. He died for you. You stand at that cross and you've got to make a decision today. Are you going to follow the deception of the wide road? Are you going to follow the direction of the wide road? You see, life calls for decisions. Man. A gate like a door is meant to be open. And you must decide to open that gate and go through. You see, Jesus says, if you knock, if you seek me with all your heart, then you'll find me. He's here this morning. And the Holy Spirit... God speaking to our hearts this morning. A gate is open before you. A life filled with decisions. What to wear, what to eat, where to go, what to do. Those are all decisions that we make every single day. But the most monumental decision that you'll ever make is right now, what are you going to do with eternity. 
What are you going to do with it? Are you going the way of Jesus Christ and the narrow gate? Or are you going down the wide road where everybody is going easily? If you're headed for eternal life, you have to go the narrow road. If you're headed for destruction, you go down the wide road. If you decide to go to the broad road, it's a decision that you have made. I hear every time when somebody messes up or sins, we blame it on God, don't we? Why did God let that happen? Well, God didn't just want that to happen. He gave Adam and Eve a choice. He gives you a choice. My God is not the God who will beat you and push you and make you do things that you don't want to do. He wants you to do what he asks you to do out of love. Out of love. If you choose him, you'll choose him out of love. If you decide not to choose him, you will choose him or you'll choose that road to destruction because you don't love Jesus enough to give your life to him. But friends, he's provided a way that leads upward to heaven. There used to be a song that's something about I'm on that road to heaven. But you know what? I'm on that road. One day when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise, this old body will be going to heaven. I will be changed in a moment. Let me tell you something. Make no mistake this morning. There's two gates, the wide and the narrow. There's two ways, the easy and the difficult. There's two crowds, the many and the few. There's two destinations, destruction and eternal life. Which are you on? Which crowd are you in? Which gate have you entered? The choice is yours. I'm fixing to pray. And I'm going to let our choir and our people sing an invitation. And it's just like this. You've got a choice. You're on one of the two roads. And let me tell you something. You know which one you're on. You know if you belong to God or not by the life you live. You know if you have the love of God in your heart by the life you live. And if you don't have the love of God in your heart, you've never been born again, you have a choice to make. You're either going to stand where you are and say, well, I think I'll wait till some other day. And you may die before that day goes, and the Bible says you'll end up in a lake of fire because you chose to go there. God didn't make you. You chose it. Or you can say, Lord, I realize I am a sinner. I realize I've got sin in my life, and I'm miserable in this sin. I want you to forgive me. And by faith, you'll step out and you'll come. And by faith, you're saying, I want you, Jesus, to come into my life. And you know what? The moment you step out and you come by faith, you'll be saved just like that. And you'll know in your heart, I chose the narrow road. Robert Frost wrote, two roads diverge in the woods. And I, I took the one less traveled. And that's made all the difference in my life. These graduates, we see them every year. They come, all oh, life, they've got a lot of choices to make where they go to college, what they're going to do for work, where they're going to work at, how they're going to live their life away from mom and dad and everybody else. But let me tell you something. If they're wise, they will choose Jesus. 
in everything they do. Most of these, I know them. They've already trusted Christ as Lord and Savior. They're on that road to eternal life, and their lives will make a difference. I hope and pray that your life will make a difference today. Choose Jesus, and it will. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, to study your word together. Lord, to look at it together, and we know what it says. There's a wide road that leads to destruction. There's a narrow road that leads to eternal life. And we must decide which one we're going to travel. One to destruction or eternal life. Lord, let us make that decision based upon the word and the promises of God. And we'll give you praise for it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen.